this second Sunday after Pentecost, we enter that period, as I mentioned last week, where we are commemorating all the glorious saints over the centuries. And indeed, today we're going to commemorate saints of many, many lands in, in general. We have these saints because every person is created unique and different and has special gifts and special ways in their life. And these saints talk to us from the various ways in which their psyche and their life was formed. And therefore, you will find that when you read the lives of the saints, you will sometimes find some that are very much akin to your own spirit. And you love them, and you get icons of them, and you follow them and pray to them. Others, not that they say anything wrong, but they may not be so much to your own psyche. But that's the beauty of the whole Christian church, that there is such a variation, an infinite one actually, because no person created in the image and likeness of God is ever the same, is ever a duplicate. It's always something unique and different about them. All those that have been in the past, that are now and that are going to be in the future. And we read them and we um, study them in order for us to get the proper understanding about the truth. The truth which is the knowing about all things, which is the, the reason, that, one of the reasons why the Lord has come to earth, to give us knowledge of all things. I wanted to say to you today a few things about what is happening in us right now. At the turn of the 20th century, there was a Russian physiologist who did quite a bit of experimental work. His name was Ivan Padlov. You may have heard of him, maybe some of you don't. He's most famously known for Pavlov's dogs. Strange thing. He did a lot of experiments with animals, trying to figure out what is it that makes animals work the way they work? And his best known experiment was feeding his bunch of dogs that he had. I think bunch is the right name, or what is it? A tribe or something? Anyway, what he did was, before he fed them, he rang a bell. And he did this several times and noticed the reaction. And after a few times of this, he noticed that when he rang the bell, the dogs would salivate. In other words, they were ready to eat. Even though he might not feed them, nevertheless, they were conditioned when they heard this bell to do these things. Scientifically, we say that these are triggers to condition a living entity to almost do something subconsciously or unconsciously. <clears throat> Why am I saying this? The reason is this, that in the world today, believe it or not, human beings have been conditioned like Pavlov's dogs in many respects. There are trigger words that are used, trigger words. And one of the most widely dispersed one today, <clears throat> on account of this viral thing, is the... Um, theories about, alternative theories about um, what this virus and all these things are happening. What's the name of that? What are these theories called? Conspiracy. Conspiracy theories, of course. Conspiracy. What are conspiracy theories? Well, they, that's a word, a trigger word, that's been deliberately put into the public domain to insult and put down anybody who may have a, an alternative notion or understanding of something that is happening in the world today. If you look at the viral situation, it's so unclear. All the statistics they, go, they give you, there are contradictions in that from various quarters. Who developed it? These contradictions. Did it come from here? Did it come from there? Was it man-made? Did it come from there? chickens or whatever. No clear clearness there. 
those that die of it, did they die of it? Or did they die of something else and just happen to have it? Or what? Again, unclear. And so it goes on. And these unclarities in things around the world today, people obviously look into it and research it and come up with a very plausible but different understanding of it. But those people who control the world don't like that because they want you to think in a certain way, the way that they want you to think. And so they make these derogatory terms, conspiracy theory. The minute you say something different to what is in the public, publicly accepted way, it's a conspiracy theory. And when that gets promoted, after a while, people get so conditioned that, that when they hear that somebody's a conspiracy theorist, they straight away put them down. Pavlov's dogs all over again that um, conditioning that occurs. There are many words like that. One of the most long-lasting one, and I think it came out of the French Revolution, but was really um, used very widely in the Soviet times, was enemies of the people. Enemy of the people. What's an enemy of the people? What are you against people or something? Well, it works like this. If you say something a bit different to the authorities, or even think a bit different to the authorities, you can be branded as an enemy of the people. And this particular trigger word is very, very vile because an enemy of the people is not just an individual, but the whole family, and maybe their family relationships, and all those as well. In the USSR, they would call a person out random to come to the KGB office for an interview. They did this because there was a quota. They had to fill the gulags with a certain number of slaves. So, you know, most of the people are honest, law-abiding, but we still need to fill up the gulags. That's what Stalin said. So we call the person over for an interview. The person comes and the interviewee very nicely introduces himself, da 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 Okay, sit down, please. Um, we have had reports that sometimes you make comments about the administration. Is that so or not? No, no. no I've never done that. But the reports seem to be um, a bit different. Um, maybe you should go away for about three days, come back in three days, we'll make an appointment, have a good think about it, and tell us exactly what's going on. You know. Oh, by the way, before you do that, the next doors to your apartment on both sides, we have heard that they've been saying certain things. Can you find out? So when you come back on the three days, three days, let us know, and that's going to make your situation a bit easier. The person goes away, totally bamboozled. Comes back in three days. Well, did you have a good think about what you said? Well, you know, I may have said, I don't like the colour of the hair of the Prime Minister. Oh, so you judge people by their uh, appearance, do you? Is that how you judge people? So you consider that everybody is not equal, but they they can be judged by their appearance. Well, you're an enemy of the people. And your family, you know, they must know this. They must hear it in private every day. So your whole family knows in danger. And what about your neighbours? Did you find out anything about them? I hardly know them. They may have said something. Did they? I will investigate. And so it goes on and on and on. And they fill up the gulags like this with innocent people who had no reason at all to be there, but nevertheless ended up as slaves in the gulag. Millions of them. Millions. That's the sort of thing that's happening now. The trigger word? Enemy of the people. So those people who end up in those places, if there's ever talk about them, the situation goes like this. Oh, so-and-so has been um, declared an enemy of the people. Oh, well, then he must have done something wrong. If he hadn't, he wouldn't have been declared so. That's the logic behind it. And their family, of course, and everybody else. Some other trigger words. Anti-Semite. Very common one. Very common one. Anti-Semite. What's a Semite? Well, according to scientific terms, it's anyone from the Arabic or Jewish race. 
anti. So what anti is? What are you against? Arabs and Jews, or what? Or in Greek, then anti means also instead of, instead of Arabs and Jews. It doesn't make sense. Of course, what they really mean, and was coined by the Jews, is anyone who says anything truthful about them, which is hurtful, like for example that they are persecuting the Palestinians, straight away branded anti-Semite. And there are even laws in certain countries that if you're declared like that, you get punished. And so it goes on. What are other ones that you know of? Political correctness. I'll let you work that one out. That's floating around all over the place. Political correctness. In other words, if you say something that's true and obvious and visible, you're not allowed to anymore. Just as it happened in the Soviet Union. You're not allowed to say the truth. You've got to somehow water it down until it means nothing at all. And then you're politically correct. So you no longer can say, oh, I saw a Chinaman, um, you know, stealing an apple or something. You've got to say, oh, look, there's could be a man who um, might be performing something in the shop there. I don't know what. You know, totally meaningless. And so it goes on and on. And there's lots of these trigger words in our society today. And we're conditioned to it. Those people who don't understand, who don't, don't know where they come from, and are not in tune to what the Holy Fathers have taught us, that what the Church has taught us about these things, obviously become conditioned like Pavlov's dogs to react to this and automatically put those people down that are branded with this. Be aware of these sorts of things, and I'm sure most of you are, that there is nothing shameful about that from the Orthodox point of view, but usually something good, because these people that are branded like that are usually ones that are more knowledgeable and more understanding about what's happening around the world and around themselves than those that are conditioned to react negatively whenever they hear these things. And thus, with these periods that we enter now, the um, great saints of our times, make sure that you read your own patron saints and the life of him or her and understand what they did and how much does your life measure up to that? Are you somehow in tune to that? And if not, why not fix that up? This is the period of the church where we are going out to baptise nations in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And that's why you have to know these things, to be aware of them so that you can give a good report and fulfil that last commandment that the, that the Lord gave us before he ascended, to indeed go and confess that gospel to the whole world. God help us with this struggle, preserve us 